All right, there we go. Well, welcome everyone tonight. This is um, our second Zoom call of Apocalypse 2020. Hosted by Elizabeth Foss and I. Uh, we came up with this idea last Saturday morning. We were texting each other, talking about all the families who are having kids come home, all the families unexpectedly homeschooling, all the moms who are now even more isolated than ever. And we just wanted to do something to bring some sense of connection, to bring some sense of fellowship and encouragement, and also to talk about topics that um, are always important to mothers, but have become hot button issues and really, really important topics to mothers. Topics that Elizabeth and I would naturally be texting about anyway or emailing each other about anyway, but we wanted to bring moms into the conversation and join together. So we're going to continue these Zoom chats. We've actually lined up some guest speakers and we're going to come on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern and Saturday mornings. We're going to do kind of a coffee in your sweats chat at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so if you're on the Pacific Coast, it's early for you, but we hope that you'll come and join us. Um, we've, we're going to tackle uh, having teens at home. We're going to talk about uh, reading aloud to your children. We're going to talk about food. And, working and, from home. Yes, that's, working, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Next working from home is a big should, one that I know, you know. Can we go ahead and drop out. some names of who's joining us? Do you think that's okay? Sure. Can we do that? yeah. Yeah. So on Saturday morning, we have Susan Hus a Husband from Kansas. Many of you know her as Soul Searching Mama. She's a blogger and uh, she has seven sons. She's got sons who are teenagers, sons in college. She'll be joining us. And then Melody Lyons, she's known as The Essential Mother. Her first book releases in April. She is the mother of eight children, has teens, college students, just like Elizabeth. And the three of them are gonna chat having your teenagers at home and what that looks like during this season. So that's gonna be Saturday morning. <laughs> Next Thursday, Danielle Bean is our special guest and she's gonna be chatting how to work from home as a mom with all your kids at home. So that's gonna be a good one. And then the following Saturday, we're going to chat with Lorraine Bennett about the temperament God gave your children and why that's an important topic when they're all at home and everybody's under the same roof for kind of a long period of time. And then who else do we have? Sarah McKenzie is going to come Sarah on talk about gonna come reading aloud. Talk about reading aloud. Um, yeah. And she's, you know, just a wealth of both information and enthusiasm. Just yes so much to know and she'll get you so excited about reading to your kids yes and then I we're going to do so one much. on um what we're what we're realizing um in our in our personal texting back and forth <laughs> recently is that uh, while we were all told to stock up now a lot of people are going um what do i do with this that i've stocked <laughs> right <laughs> how do i make this into meals and how do i think before we're thinking about it, because I do think a lot of us, uh, you know, we, you and I were talking before we started recording, mm -hmm. that a lot of us are realizing that even those of us who stocked up, we're, we're needing a different sort of meal planning system. Right. And certainly, right. if you haven't been a meal planner, mm -hmm. now we kind of do need to all be meal planners. So we're going to talk about meal planning. Um, I think we're inviting my daughter-in-law to do yes. that with us. Yeah, she did a real, a real fun thing yesterday on Instagram about meal planning, and um, and we thought, you know, this this is definitely a thing. So yeah. we've got lots yeah. planned, y'all. We're planning. We do. It's going to gonna be so fun. And if you have any suggestions, post them in the comments because I'm reading the comments. I'll write them down. Uh, For sure. A couple other things we haven't nailed down uh, guests who haven't confirmed yet, so I can't share any more names, but a couple topics we know we want to cover are self-care for moms. I told Elizabeth I needed a topic on how not to eat pretzels for breakfast and, you know, all the stress eating I feel like I'm doing the last two days because I'm so stressed. Um, and then I want to do one on how to prepare your home for potentially celebrating Holy Week and Easter at home, because that could be the case. I think that's going to be a thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to yeah, be a I thing, too. And I think we too. all are going to be figuring that out together, but we want right. to kind of do that before we're looking right. at Holy Week. So right. we definitely are, are gearing that way and trying to think it through with you and yes. so that we can, I mean, really be intentional. It, it's going to be a very strange thing to yes. not potentially to right. not go to church right. that entire week. 
Right. And, um, and we need to be really thinking about what a domestic church looks like in 2020 yeah. when you cannot go to your parish church. So yeah, that's one that we're really gonna, we're really gonna bring you hopefully. Yeah. Yep. So, so for tonight, we're going to, uh, Elizabeth and I will chat for a few minutes, just wrapping up some of the conversation that we had last, uh, whatever the day that was, when was that Sunday night when we had our first zoom call, just yeah, a couple of things okay. about rhythm and routine that I wanted to cover questions that came up after that call. But then the night really is yours ladies. So if you have a question, uh, if you want to ask your question, uh, vocally, just put an emoji in the chat box and I will call on you. At that point, you'll um, unmute your microphone, the little microphone icon, so you can speak and then mute it again when you're done speaking. But if you'd prefer to use the chat and write out your comment, I will ask Elizabeth and we can just discuss it from the chat box too. So either and way- And we gathered it to you from um, email and text. We do, too, we, we do. I have a whole sheet here. So. Yep, I've got a lot. So if you've asked a question, we haven't forgotten you. We're getting We that. do, that's right. So one of the things I wanted to chat just briefly about Elizabeth, um, that came up, I was asked this on my Instagram messages after our last Zoom call, was just some more specifics about what our rhythms or our family routines look like. So right. I've been thinking about it since Sunday night and realized that I have, the way that I structure our family life and my our rhythms and our routines is I prioritize, like I block prioritize certain things. And not everything has the same value. And while I do schedule, I do plan, because life is so crazy in every dimension, just family life in general, having a new baby, homeschooling, now being housebound, all those things, it's so important in my life to be fluid with my plans. Mm -hmm. So right. I have this general, this is what has to get done, this should get done, I want this to get done. And then I have to really roll with how the day shapes us, not just forcing the day to be shaped how I want. Right. It. And I think so, that we tried, yeah. you know, that that's a kind of the point that we had last week where hmm. it's more of a rhythm and less of a routine. Right. And then to, to triage, to keep those priorities going. So I wanted so. to share just a couple of mine, just to give examples. And this is different for every family. Um, so I have three categories. I have my ride or die has to happen in the day, like the most important priorities for our family. So I, those are my ride or dies. Then I have my must do's and those are not ride or die, but they really, really, really should happen. Yeah. And then I have my should do's is my third. So for my ride or dies, these are the things that are like the most important to our family culture. Some of them are prayer and alone time for each spouse, even if it's just 10 minutes at the very beginning of the day and 10 minutes at the end of the day but each spouse needs at least a sliver of time by themselves and a sliver of time to pray. Now in this stage of life for Peter and I, that is not a long amount of time, but it just at least needs to be a little bit of time. And then secondly, time with spouse every day. So for us, that's usually after everyone's in bed on the later side of the evening, but that's a huge priority for us. Uh, daily chores for everybody daily up time before dinner and then before bedtime, laundry every day, cooking meals every day, an enforced afternoon quiet time. I make my kids do quiet activities for two hours every afternoon and daily outdoor play and a walk around the neighborhood. So those are the things that are most important in our family culture. And then the must do's are exercise for each spouse, kids make bed, get dressed, do chores, our morning time routine, um, uh, math and grammar. What else did I put on there? Read aloud time, piano practice, and reading on own. So those are the next like super important things to me. So time with my spouse is always gonna trump math and grammar. If I had to pick between the two, if that makes sense, because ride or die, it's time with spouse. But I, if there's like two subjects of homeschooling I wanna get done, it's math and grammar. So they're more important than my should do list, which is all the other schoolwork, baker cook with kids, weekly tasks like wash the sheets, deep clean the house, games, crafts, feast day projects, um, everything else on my to-do list. So like today I wanted to do this St. Joseph bread feast day baking project with my kids. That didn't get done because <laughs> Just getting math done <laughs> was enough today. Like it just so that was on my should do list was to bake the bread and have that special feast day time with the kids. That did happen. Math did get done. Um, 
and we got an outside walk. It was during our time when I took the kids on a neighborhood walk that I would have made the bread with them. So I have to often during the day just make those decisions between the thing that is important on that today's to-do to -do list and the thing that really, really, really has to happen for our family culture. And so that's kind of how the day goes. And then we're fluid with, if we have more time in the day, I can fit more of those extra things in, fit in the science lesson, fit in the history lesson, do more workbooks with the kids. But on the days where it's just not going that way, I just scale back to what are the really important things to our family. Reading a chapter of Narnia, getting the math lesson done, kids go practice your piano lesson, and we move on. And I don't... Yeah sweat sweat the rest of it because tomorrow's a new day and preserving that family culture and the bigger picture of what we're trying to do for our children and for our family trumps those other things so i hope that that makes sense but um yeah i think that's is your day similar elizabeth with like how you try to prioritize <laughs> yeah i mean mine's mine is definitely the, the whole idea of prioritizing like that and and making sure you you hit the big things that's very very similar um, my day looks a lot like yours. Actually, I think it looks surprisingly like yours considering the difference in children. And age. Um, my day looks a lot different today than it did 10 days ago mm -hmm. um, because my kids are older. So my day had a lot more going out. Um, I mean, to stay home all day is a pretty rare thing at this stage of the game. So um, before our containment or whatever it is we're doing <laughs> what do we call this thing so before that um i had almost daily for me personally had almost daily adoration where i would go to adoration either before or after dropping or picking up from dance and okay. i was able to integrate that and that is i think the greatest gift that comes with your kids being older Mm -hmm. You know, I, it, it's much more doable for me to do that. And that, um, you know, sometimes it was just a little short visit. And sometimes I would treat myself to an hour. Um, and that was honestly in the last year that's been my biggest self-care thing. When we were talking about self-care, like I'm a little bit lost without it right now. So that's been a huge adjustment. Um, I work early in the mornings. Like I get up at least three hours before my kids. Now, that means I get up about five, but sometimes that's honestly four or five hours before my kids, depending on how late they were out the night before. Okay. So now they're not going, you know, they don't, they don't have dance, they're not working late, they, you know, everything's a little different. But generally speaking, I would, I get up early in, in the mornings and I work. And then I work in big sports when my husband's traveling. Usually at our house, it's feast or famine. He either works from home or he's traveling, he travels a lot. And so all that time, you know, where you're talking about the, after the kids settle down in the mm -hmm. evening times, I use that time a lot of times for, for work. Okay. That's all different now too, right? because he's home, which is so great, you know, to, for him to be home and not have a trip looming is, um, not have a trip looming is just, it's crazy to, yeah. to kind of relax into that new rhythm of him mm -hmm. being here. But mm -hmm. it's also has me looking for different pockets to work in. Mm -hmm. um, I hinge my laundry routine in the morning. Um, I, when I go to bed at night, there's a, a load that's almost dry that I know will be dry in the morning. And then I put a load on to wash. Yes, they sit there all night long. Nothing bad happens. Okay. They're always fine, but they're ready to throw in the dryer in the morning. So I fold that okay. load. And then I, um, and then dry the other load, fold that load. They're all out on the counter and they pick them up in the morning, put them away. And I just, it's, my life is incredibly different after having finally nailed how to keep it up. Oh, laundry. Um, and then, um, what else? Let's see. Um, oh, that laundry time and unload the dishwasher time is my time to listen to audiobooks. So those are my books. And, and for me, that's been a great way to read. I read the book you recommended a couple of weeks ago is my latest read. Oh, really? The, one about the airplane fire one? Yeah, What's it called? yeah. How to walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I was riveted. It's like trying to find things to do that would allow me to keep <laughs> listening. Okay, I gotta go clean this room now. <laughs> that room now. 
No, you know, I should have listened to it on Audible because I was trying to read it. It would be like three pages and then, you know, oh, the next mom thing. <laughs> so well done on Audible. The woman who read it on Audible was fabulous. Oh, wow. That's so And cool. so for me, that's a great way for me to get that, that personal reading time in. I'm very dependent on Audible and um, love it. And that's, that's a good way to keep, keep reading. Um, By the way, I just learned today from my friend Kristen, who's on the call, that Audible has extended a, I think it's 90 days free to kids right now. Oh, so, great. Um, yeah. So anyone who wants to try Audible, I think it's a three month, I, I believe that's correct. Maybe Kristen can put in the comments. Um, but yeah, so Audible for kids. I, we do a ton of Audible here because we do too. you can't read aloud. <laughs> or too much is going on your kids can still be read aloud and too. we always have i mean we back when it was literally books on tape we right. you know we all the drive time was converted into to read aloud time and a lot of times my kids chore time is listening to audible or you know listening to something right so we do a lot 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 of it so yeah. um and then the only other thing a couple other things so my ride or die because I have big kids who are accountable to somebody other than me, you know, who are dual enrolled or whatever. Now I've got like college kids sitting here doing school, but <laughs> they're accountable to other people. So, so my ride or die is for sure to check in with them every day, just to make sure that we're on track. And the older they get, the more they carry it. And, you know, eventually I'm not at all doing that. But in the very beginning, when we start dual enrollment, it is actually very labor intensive. So for moms who have middle school, high school kids coming home, they are capable of doing so much independently and they don't need you to like hold their hands. Mm -hmm. But the time management thing, this is all so, so new. They absolutely yes. need, you know, yes. you to check in, to make sure, to look at the list, to like, you're gonna have to help them learn how to manage time. Uh, and probably for more than a couple of weeks in the very yeah. beginning, it's just what it is because yeah. it's all it's all new. And um, and then I've noticed a lot this week. I told you this a couple of days ago, Stephanie. Like I had one day it was all about technology. It was just like, you know, and my we didn't have that much different. Like it, this mm -hmm. is what we've done all along. But some of the distance learning technology that we've used all along was way overloaded. Mm -hmm. you know you know there's a, a couple of well explode the code the explode the code website was down forever and, you know for days because mm -hmm. i just think it's been inundated now right so right. lots of things you know where that's concerned um and then the other thing for me that's ride or die is i cannot go to sleep in the kitchen unless the kitchen is clean like that is it has to happen yes. because i because morning for me is so sacred I yeah. cannot start my day looking at a mess. So oh, I very a psychological have to difference, it. isn't it? <laughs> I know. I very rarely have to clean it. You know, usually there's a kid who who does it and does it pretty well. So it's not like it's a me thing that, mm -hmm. that I'm doing that when I'm really late and tired. When my kids were really little, I did. I mean, I just I cannot wake up to a mess. So that's definitely at the top of my list. So, and then the must-dos for our house are very similar to your house, except we don't have music practice because we never got to it. Um, our read aloud time is very often on Audible. Mm -hmm. um, exercise is a must-do for all of us. Like that's a thing, and um, and it's been really interesting to see now that everybody's home and exercise is built into their extracurricular to mm -hmm. see them starting to hold each other accountable and um yeah. you know did you do your whatever or what was the plan today and um you know tennis is a great social distancing sport so a couple of my <laughs> boys decided today that like they don't ever play tennis but mm -hmm. whatever we can do that not yeah. be close to anybody yeah. so um but that for us it's key and, and it'll be interesting to talk to susan um, on Saturday, because I feel like yes. boys live bigger in the house. You know, I have five boys, I have four girls, and people are always telling me how girls are harder. And I feel like now I have enough of a, a grip on this that I will weigh in that I'm not going to say who's harder, but boys live bigger inside, like way bigger. They take up more square footage, they have more energy, 
they just live bigger. So mm -hmm. to be inside with a whole bunch of boys, yes. you've got to give them physical outlets. I mean, that's yep. got to be a necessity. Yep. So, uh, and also the girls, I mean, I have a lot of girls who can't sit still either, you know, for sure. But with boys, I just think it's yep. even more. Yep. So, yep. Um, let's see, what else did I have here? Um, I, cooking is not optional. I cook with them, uh, uh, with each of my kids at least once a week. We have a system where it's somebody's night and it might mean, like tonight was Nick's night. He was gonna do the whole thing on his own and he was totally capable of it. But he pulled me in to, you know, chop an onion and whatever, just to kind of speed things along. So sometimes I'm very much a sous chef, not at all, whatever. And sometimes I'm training somebody and teaching them and, you know, giving them pointers all along. So my youngest is 11 and she doesn't do a meal by herself. We do it together. Um, but this is a long-term thing. We've always done it this way. My, I, they shop with me too. Um, you know, I take my teens grocery shopping. Oh, that's so good. They learn how to meal plan, they learn how to shop. And then one mm -hmm. of their treats when they get their licenses, they, they take the list and they go. And, um, and they've done it enough with me that they're on their own. And my boys turned it into a competition sport. And so far, my oldest still holds the record. He can do Costco shopping for a family of 11 in 18 minutes. Woo! Um, but you know what? He takes that. He's taken that into his own family. And his wife can hand him a list and know he can get it done. Or I, he does it on his own, too. He's a fabulous cook. Oh, my kids cook. So... Awesome. It's just a thing. It's just who we are. It's part of our family yep. culture, I think. Yep. So, yep. And then for, um, for everyone listening and everyone watching, it's really um, just really taking it to thought with your husband and what is your family co culture and what is most important to you and then intentionally building your life around that every aspect like you have the freedom to to look at every aspect of your life do you want your kids in a ton of sports do you want to do music do you want you know whatever it is for your family that's important and not impor important you can structure your day and your life around that so it's not just what's important to elizabeth or what's important to me but right. what's important to you and your spouse and then prioritizing those things so that you can let go what can't get done in a day because we none of right. us can get done in a day. Right. And I do think that, you know, again, we have to keep looking at this time that we are in right now as, right. as an opportunity. Yes, it's a challenge. There is no question. This is very challenging. Yeah. But one of the things that we've lost as a culture is family dinners. It's really yeah. hard to get everybody around the table at the same time for dinner. And one of the things that we've gained with this particular situation is the ability and the necessity to have family dinner. There's no reason not to have a family dinner every day. And it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to be gourmet and you don't have to make production out of the cooking of it. You know, if that's not your family culture to, to cook together, that's fine. But I think that if you were to ask my grown children, I actually know this, this comment came up at the dinner table two nights ago. But if you would ask my kids, my grown children, what the most important thing we ever did was, they would say family dinners. I have a kid, my fifth child is a junior. I don't know what he is now, but yeah, at James Madison <laughs> University. And he wrote a short story about family dinners. They were turning into a movie before the semester got cut short, but like that's how critical. Yes. My kids come away from here, you know, thinking family dinner is. And, and that's where uh, my husband's not involved with our curriculum choices very much. He doesn't, you know, he's not looking over their shoulders school wise, but he educates my kids. Yeah. Every time he sits down at the dinner table, like, and, and, and it's, it's mostly impromptu. It's not like we sit down with like a stack of cards or right, right. You know, we have conversation starters. It's whatever happens. Right. But, but there is a lot of learning that happens yeah. there about a yeah. lot of important things. Yeah. It's not always a serious conversation either, but right. I mean, a lot of times it's, you know, banter, but, but that's what they remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's For the sure. good stuff. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's that. I mean, those are those are kind of the high points of of what you know what where we are um, and yeah. 
and what what matters in the structure of the rhythm of the day yep yep that's good all right so we start taking some of these good questions coming in yeah let's yeah. start with um megan asked she's having problems with her youngest as he's used to play dates and time with other younger friends she says how do you manage when all the activities seem to be aimed at the older kids including schooling reading and even screens and then her second question is limiting screens her boys have ipads even for their school yeah so so ben the screen question has come up a lot in the last two or three days i've, I've talked to a bazillion people and the screen question keeps coming up because screens for school are, are a thing and we're grateful that they're a thing and and they're a thing in my house too and um i think i think that the key to screens is that screens have to be intentional. So with my, with my younger kids, basically if you're under 18, although my 17 year old pushes this pretty much to the outer limits of, of it, but if you're under 18, you have to ask. So the screens are under my control and, and whether that's an iPad or a television set or, or whatever, um, they don't, my little ones don't have phones, but it, and by little, I have an 11 and 13 year old, but they don't have phones. But they, they have iPads and iPods and, um, and the TV certainly is here, but you have to ask. If you're gonna use a screen, you have to ask. So that means I'm engaging. What are you using the screen for? And I can make that decision about, is this the right time? And is it what we need to use the screen for? Um, we absolutely use screens for school legitimately you know and uh, and they're a huge huge tool um, I was talking to somebody today who's struggling with that whole work at home thing and I said save the school screens save the yep. leave the screens save all the screens yeah for when you want to work at home and then then a screens are better because mm -hmm. they are saved um, and when kids are away from screens, at first they're twitchy, just like, frankly, we're twitchy. If we've gotten into the habit of always having a screen in front of us, we get weird when we're away from screens. Mm -hmm. um, but once they get past that initial, what do I do with myself thing, they're going to find things to do with themselves. Now, right. I don't know in Megan's case how young her youngest is and what the age gap is, you know, and, and what exactly, how to exactly engage that child. Um, my big kids were always assigned things to do with little kids. Like it was just a matter of fact that if I had to teach reading to a five-year-old then I needed a 12 year old to go read to a three-year-old or go play blocks with a three-year-old or just make sure the three-year-old isn't getting into something that she shouldn't get into. Um, you know, a big kid, depending on where you live and, and how old the big kid is, the little kid is, they can take them outside in the backyard while you have, the one in the middle to do something with. Um, so I, I think that I think that a lot of times our culture discourages us from asking our children who are capable mm -hmm. for to do anything, you know, and um, and you're doing them a huge favor when you teach them to serve. And yes. we are right now in a community that is family. Right. And there is no better place than to learn how to serve one another. Right. And, and that servant's heart, it will stand them in good stead for a really long time. Um, I, you know, probably the most beautiful moment of my week or two ever since whatever this, does anybody even know what day it is anymore? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I said something to Nick, actually, we were talking about dinner, and I said, you know, do you want to make that chicken thing tonight? And he's like, no, it's Friday. And I'm like, pretty much not. <laughs> it's not Friday. <laughs> but anyway, one of the, probably one of the most beautiful things that happened this week or last week um, was my, my daughter-in-law is in Connecticut. We're in Virginia. She's got five little ones. One is an emerging reader who we really, really don't want to lose ground now that school's stopped. And um, she did a group text to all the aunts and uncles, so my other eight kids and me and my husband and said, okay, so who wants to read to them? And then the coolest thing was, what are you gonna read? And, and me like 
reaching out to each of those kids and saying, well, we have all your favorite books here. Like, mm-hmm. what do you want me to send you to the ones that are not here? And, and then responding like happily with titles of picture books that they had read Mm-hmm. to them when they were little and then mm-hmm. this whole thing has now begun and they're reading to the to the kids in Connecticut and it's just a beautiful thing to see of course we'll read to them because of course that's what we've done you know we that's 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 how we do this and that's what we do and and it's so great to see how technology yeah. is letting us do that now yeah um so, so it's, you know, these are the things my kids always had three books before bedtime. So when they were little, three picture books before bedtime, but I didn't put everybody to bed individually. So that meant if you were, you know, in a room with three other kids, you're getting nine books before bedtime. Each and kid gets three stories. Time. Whoa, you are mm-hmm. such an awesome mom. Three books. Don't tell bedtime. my kids. <laughs> That's but, awesome. but, but, okay, so, but that counted big in our academic yep. time you know mm-hmm. bedtime took forever but I counted that as part oh, of yeah. our school day for sure you know and um and then the other thing is it, it made them sleepy you know sometimes they'd fall asleep in somebody during somebody else's book um and sometimes you know it was the same three books we read the day before but yeah three <laughs> books at bedtime and and now they're in their 20s and they're like well wait I get to read that one to her that was always mine and you know and it's really that's a cool thing to see but so so my point for Megan is you know it those don't be afraid to ask those big kids to engage with the little kids um and and you know you're not asking them to be a babysitter while you go off and eat bonbons you're you're asking them to be a part of the community and, and that's what we're all about right now yeah, so that's good. All right, um, let's see. Kim Montgomery asked about. She said the school is sending home homework, and it's a ton, and uh, that she's struggling with getting it all done with wow. all the other housework and everything else that you know you're expected to do with your own mom. So, how to fit that in when the school is expecting it to be done? So that's really surprising to me because. <laughs> I got, I got weirdness. Okay. So that's, um, that's really surprising because what I'm hearing here is there isn't nearly enough and they're like blazing through it. Um, so, um, one thing I would wonder is, is, is it appropriate? You know, we have to give these teachers cut a little slack here because this is just so new for them and they've had to come up with this so quickly and um and the plan wasn't in place and i think they're trying to give you as much as you might need to to keep things moving but they're not quite sure how this works out independently um so i think that that to break it into small you know charlotte mason who is a, a big proponent of home education um in the 1800s in England so what does that have to do with us but but one thing she said was to break it into small chunks so to train a kid to pay attention but to pay attention for 10 minutes at a time Mm -hmm. so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to help you do this worksheet for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we're both going to get up and you're going to come help me dry dishes or you're going to go play and I'm going to get the kitchen clean and then we'll come back to it and we'll give it another 10 minutes and together we can work in 10 minute increments now if you've got more than one kid doing that and they all need your attention at once that's going to get tricky so the 10 minutes might might need to be with child one and then child two and then child three and you still haven't cleaned the kitchen and at some point you're going to learn what every homeschool mom learns and that's that when you have a lot of people in the house all day and you're all together all day long sometimes your house doesn't look the way you wish it would and you just do the best you can and the nice thing about now is frequently we we do have other adults at home you know our husbands are home they can help if everybody's on the same page and if they're not home there's got to be some understanding that i just can't do it all i can't get to everything and and you have to be okay with that um and that's frankly for me probably the hardest thing in homeschooling 
was accepting that perfection in housework wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I could, I could finish long division to its bitter end, or I could, you know, vacuum the middle floor. And sometimes we just really needed to persevere in the, in the school stuff. So I, I also would not hesitate to um, communicate with the teacher. If you really feel like it's too much, you know, is it too much for you and you're not getting your stuff done or is it too much in that she's given them things that they can't do independently and and to do that in a way that acknowledges the hard work put forth to give the child work but mm -hmm. also gives her free feedback you know right not free feedback but you know be free with is that i think that and, and i have pretty limited experience with this you know I've, a couple of people locally have shared with me what teachers are sent um i've seen frankly sweet and heartbreaking notes from my granddaughter's teacher who this is so hard for her she had this class of kindergartners all the way through to march and then now she may not get them back again and she's trying to to figure out what they need from her and she want they all want to help right. none of them are saying Poof, we're done they all really want to help so i think that two-way conversation with the teacher i would encourage you to have it yeah. And, um, you know, she's, they're making themselves available, hopefully. And I think they will, because it's not like teachers think they're done. They don't. Right. right. So. right. Yeah. Okay. Next question from Anne. She asked for time management tips for a 16 year old with ADHD. Boy or girl, Anne. And I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think, but I'm she just said, I think she said girl. Let me see. Where was that question? I think she said girl. Okay. So the first tip I yes have. girl okay so the first tip i had uh, i have for you i saw this today um monk manual has come out with planning pages for kids and they're free you know it's a download print them off i think the, that it's super important that you help her get on like to do for herself what we're talking about doing prioritize get it on paper check things off, um, eliminate distractions. And so, so the first thing that has to happen is that phone or that, that screen. And, and if she's using a screen for school, you need to make sure that the email isn't chiming in. There's no text box that comes up, you know, all, teach her how to have ownership over eliminating all those distractions. Mm -hmm. And then and we're going to try to talk specifically like an entire night about special needs but we need to acknowledge that this is such a challenge for our kids who aren't neurotypical like these are the kids who thrive on schedule these are the kids who um who need their structure these are the kids who are getting support in other places and um and suddenly the whole world's upside down and they've got to process that in a way that we're not even doing. Um, so I think we need to acknowledge that for a kid that's ADHD, who's suddenly in a home environment instead of in the school environment where hopefully some of those things have been addressed, um, we're gonna to need to sit and think about how to create the most distraction free environment. So that depends on your house, you know, she's old enough that she can be in a room by herself if you can find space to put her in that room. Um, and I would encourage her to work in short chunks. I mean, she can go in longer than 10 minute, but you know, she could go in a 20 minute chunk and, and lay out the plan. All right, what are you going to do now? I'm going to work on this for 20 minutes and I'm going to get up and move. I'm going to, and, and actually with a, a anyone who's ADHD, start the day with movement, like real movement, something aerobic, get out, move, because getting all that, that gross motor activity going is going to help focus and attention. So trade off, start with the, the motor activity, then come into something focused and go back out to something that uses the bigger, spaces and then back into something focused but 
really help her guard her space, her time. Um, I highly recommend, if not the monk manual pages, you know, even a list. You're up in the morning, what are you gonna accomplish today? You don't have to hold to a tight, you know, 8.30 to 8.45 schedule, but you do have to help her learn that skill of prioritizing and working through the checklist. 16 is old enough to recognize I have ADD. And because I have ADD, you know, I have trouble blocking out all the conversations that are going on in the house around me. So I need to be in a space where I'm not going to hear that. And honestly, I've seen this be a closet. You know, it's not a punishment. It's just a, here we are, we're all together. You need room. How can I help you find a space where you're not going to be distracted? Uh, and then check on them and, you know, be sure that they don't need additional help with the content. That is just time management. But I think a lot of conversation, somebody that age is able to put a name on it to understand what ADHD is and how it makes their brain work differently and to start owning some of that uh, strategies to, to work with it. So that when they are older, you know, we're talking a couple of years from now, they're either in the workplace or they're at school away from you in college, um, they're gonna need those skills. So this is a good time to start really talking about what those skills look like in real life. Right, so that's what I got. All right, so Jennifer emailed a question. She said her concerns are multiple teenagers at home, dirty dishes, constant eating, phone usage, etc. So Jennifer, we are hosting uh, a whole call on <laughs> oh, this Jennifer, topic. I feel you. Tune <laughs> in Saturday for sure, 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, and so I, you know, my my thought is to not go too far with that now because we are going to talk about. I feel like I'm being way more authoritarian than I've been before. You know, a lot of the things like dishes and eating and stuff, you're like, you can kind of let that slide. You can't under these circumstances. And I find myself saying, okay, no, you can't snack. Like you just can't. We'll mm -hmm. eat three times a day. You can, you know, maybe have a something at night or whatever, but, but we can't do this all day long thing. And then the dishes, you are plenty old enough to take care of your dishes. And you have to because we're all going to go under if you don't and and really let them own it because you really need their help and and i think that's the thing you know set firm limits explain why and then it has to happen and right. if they're boys especially but almost anybody get dad involved you know where it's a family meeting we all need to get along together in this space for however long it is and by golly, we have to keep it clean. So also the food thing, I have said several times in the last couple of days, y'all, we, we had pictures of what the grocery store looked like. We have this amount of food. I don't know when those shelves are gonna be restocked and neither do you. Right. So don't waste it. You know, don't fix right. yourself a snack and let it sit there. Right. And don't eat because you're bored because we honestly need to to be really careful stewards in a way that most of us don't have to be usually right um but i've had with my big kids i've had that with my little kids i, I you know i don't want them to worry and i don't want them to whatever they don't know very much of why we're doing this crazy thing but with my big kids i've, I've absolutely 100 percent had that conversation so but we'll talk about teens way a lot on Saturday. Yes, we will. We will. Okay, so Karen says she's been homeschooling for two years. She's still sorting it all out. What would what she wants to know is, do we have tips for getting started at a reasonable time each morning? She said our mornings are slower, which she enjoys, but she also has a problem letting all the other things wait, dishes, laundry, et cetera. I think she- You wanna go first? What? <laughs> What? You go first. You know what, uh, Karen, I, I let the mornings go slow and much more so now that I have a new baby again. Um, there's a three and a half, almost four year gap between my fourth child and my fifth. And we really, you know, as she became a toddler who was sleeping in and stuff, we actually got really good at being very efficient in the mornings. And I got a ton done and then, you know, new baby comes again and it's just a different 
story all over again. So I too am enjoying the slower mornings. We eat breakfast late. We stay in pajamas until breakfast times. We eat about nine o'clock in the morning now, but I use, I start school with breakfast. Um, we do what we call morning time. So that's where we do our memory work and learn hymns and um, do some read alouds. So breakfast takes a long time, but you know, I've had coffee, the baby's been fed, the kids have played, we've said goodbye to daddy, he's gone to work, I mean, daddy's here now working in a practically a glorified closet, but dad's here. But we've like, all those things have happened and when we sit down for breakfast, a lot of the morning to do the laundry is already going has been done. So I like that slower start. Yeah. Starting an hour earlier than that, or even earlier than that, just it's a little, it's hectic. It's like, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Is your bed made? Are you dressed? You know, it's just, I like, I am at, I'm in a state of peace starting late and slow and it works for us, but I think you just I, I've kind of been you. with you there. I, um, our mornings are really slow and very staggered. Um, we don't eat breakfast all together. You know, we don't have a morning meeting at all. Um, I have a couple of kids who have always been my morning kids. Um, and I'm up way before they are, but then they're up and they like being up before the other kids are up. They claim that time is their own. Mm -hmm. Um, they have been known to cry if they don't get it, like if they act oh, or sleep. Or whatever. Um, but prior to this, you know, well, even when my big kids were really little, my husband worked because he works in athletics. He worked lots and lots of evenings, um, lots of, you know, time when he was working in an office, he wouldn't get home until nine or 10. The kids would stay up late enough to see him. So they were going to bed late. So they were getting up later in the morning and we liked that flexibility. Um, and then we definitely liked that flexibility when, um, you know, when sports, you know, at, at one point my kids were, my boys were practicing soccer until 9.30, you know, they were not home before 10. Um, and I love to be able to say, well, you don't have to get on the bus in the morning. So, so they, we've always had kind of slow mornings um, and kind of staggered mornings where, um, I got a lot of my stuff done and then they came down. We do do breakfast, you know, but, but not all together. You know, a lot of times it's pretty catered and they're a little bit spoiled. Um, when my husband's home, um, uh, he gets breakfast to bed every day. And that sounds like some Aww. sort of, I know, but it's you not, so let me, but no, it's not. So let me go back. <laughs> he does not like chaos in the morning. Like it really it gets the day going wrong. And I don't really like him in the space where I'm worried about chaos in the morning. Like I can deal with chaos in the mornings. So I'm fine with it, but not if I'm worried about it bothering him. And it just makes sense for me to bring him breakfast and him to ease into the day that way. And, um, and if the kids aren't up yet, like I'll bring his coffee up and I'll sit and chat for a while if it's a good day to do that. Um, our, our youngest, Sarah, is one of my morning people. She loves to be able to go up there and have him to herself. Um, and that's the beauty of being able to do this on our own time. So our mornings don't look like school mornings. Nobody's saying the pledge that, you know, 8.30. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's the, I, that's my honest truth. I could not yeah. give you a morning, you know, gathering routine if my life depended on it mm -hmm. so. and it's okay it, it's yeah. okay that way it doesn't have to look like a traditional school and it's it's okay <laughs> it doesn't maybe even a good thing if it doesn't look like it at home because home should be right. different so okay so let's see some of these other questions coming in megan says all of her kids are not interested in the same read alouds her oldest are pretty resistant to new books anything with suspense um let's see they're so used to their catholic school setting i think she says and they're having trouble with the multi-age group at home <laughs> wow uh, yeah so i think we all have to break the school mode for now i mean that's just gonna we can't we can't do it and um i i don't depending on how wide that age range is you, you may not be able to do 
everybody's read aloud together. It's just not going to capture everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. You know, every once in a while you come across a book that, that is enough for a big kid and not too much for a, a much younger kid. But mm -hmm. to some degree, you know, some of this has to be done separately. If you're both home, you know, if you and your husband are both home, then divide and conquer, you know, and, and let him take some of them to one room and you take other. And this is where the bedtime story read aloud thing really works. And, and you start bedtime a lot earlier in order to, to do it. Um, but if you can set aside that hour at the end of your day mm -hmm. and then divide up and, you know, somebody's doing picture books in this room and somebody's doing chapter books in that room or, you know, different level chapter books, that'll make it work. You know, you can, you can make that, that happen. The other thing you can do is this is where audibles are a really great thing. You know, you give one kid a good book on audible and you give him earbuds and you give him three loads of laundry to fold or a big box of unmatched socks to do or Legos or something to do with his hands. Mm -hmm. And you say, you know, I just want you to listen for an hour. At the mm -hmm. end of that hour, just tell me everything you can remember so right. that you're reminding him that this listening is active listening. You know, I want to know everything you can remember, but it's okay for his read aloud to be separate from everybody else's read aloud. Mm -hmm. And you can do it in the reverse with a younger child. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's, that's, you know, that's the best we can do there. And, and again, y'all don't miss Sarah McKenzie because yeah, when she comes, you're just going to be so in love with the whole idea of reading to your family. So. Um, okay, so let's see. I think we have time for just one more question because we're going to try to wrap up uh, right at 10. Carla asked, she asked an email question, if I can only get to one or two subjects a day right now, I'm working full time from home, what should I focus on? Oh, this is a great question. I love this question. So I, um, I had a long conversation yesterday with Amon who's local to me and, um, and you know, different school districts are handling this differently in our school district. Um, these kids haven't had school since a week ago, Thursday. Mm -hmm. So last Thursday, um, but we had a lot of snow days saved up cause we didn't, it didn't snow this winter. So the teachers all kind of took this week as a snow day week. Like they weren't doing much of anything and trying to get the underpinnings going in the background. So her thing was, I'm getting nothing from the school. What do I do with them? And we kind of came up of, with an on the fly thing, but it, again, you're triaging. And this question is all about, if I can only do one or two, what do I do? Do math, make sure they're doing math because once you stop doing math, they're going to forget. It, it's gonna, it'll fade. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I gave her three things. I told her, Make sure they do math every day. If you still haven't gotten math from the schools, you know, then we need to look at some resources for math. And I'm going to put these up. Uh, I'm going to try really hard to get a whole big page up on my blog tomorrow morning. Um, so math every day. Um, and then something to read every day. You know, something where they're reading. So not necessarily a read aloud, but they have to read every day. And this, you know, if you're working from home, depending on the age of your kids, this could be a kid sitting with you while you work, you know, as long as you're not on a conference call or whatever, but while you work, you can see them actually reading, turning pages right. in a book, like really right. reading. Right. They need to read every day and they need to write every day. They need to write something. And this is where there probably aren't, you know, always going to be writing assignments, but we have our kids write about what they read. We have them write about what they heard. We have them write about what they see. Um, I'm having my kids keep journals and reminding them that, you know, it, it, you know, we have lots of examples of journals that people have kept through significant times in history. And we love the daily minutia things. And they mm -hmm. have an opportunity to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a historical event. It yes. absolutely is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, keep a, di a diary of what your life looks like, your really ordinary 11 year old life. Yes. So I would, if the schools are giving it to you, make sure you're looking for the reading, the writing, and the math, and focus hard on that. 
Mm -hmm. um, because those are the things you need to maintain those skills and you hope that you're going to keep moving forward. Yes. Um, so that would be the, the bare minimum. Okay. That's great. Well, let, I'm going to stop with the questions there. We will pick it up on Saturday morning. So we're going to come on every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And going forward, we're going to be bringing on special guests and having special topics. Next Thursday is Danielle Bean, and we're going to talk about uh, working from home as a mother when all your kids are there and, and what that can look like. So Danielle will join us for that. And then on Saturday morning, we're going to have a coffee chat with Susan Husband of Soul Searching Mama blog and Melody Lyons. Uh, her blog is The Essential Mother. And uh, Elizabeth, between the three of you, you have like 30 children. <laughs> we have a lot. There's a lot. There. <laughs> and there's a lot of teenagers and a lot of college students between the three of these mamas. Yep. So, and a lot of boys. Yes, a lot of boys. Uh, very yes. boy heavy. <laughs> yes. So I will be fielding your questions from the chat box. Anything you want to email for these three ladies between now and Saturday morning. And please, please come in your sweats, whatever, bring your coffee mug. And we're just going to chat about teens during this special time of quarantine, apocalypse, whatever we're, we're calling we're calling it today. <laughs> so that will be Saturday. And then what we'll do is we're going to post all the upcoming topics and all the registration links, hopefully tomorrow on our Instagram and everything. So that if you want to pre-register for all the calls, we do have a limited uh, capacity for Zoom. So if you want to go ahead and pre-register for the calls and you'll have your links to each one, you'll be able to do that. I hope by tomorrow, if I can figure out the tech details to all that. So, tomorrow is better than today. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's a Friday and lunch, you never know. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> it's nice know, to be a good night. A solemnity and this is what we can like. I know, like, right? I know, I know, I know. Well, I hope that you all have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us. We will have the recording up on YouTube of tomorrow as well if you want to share it with any friends who need to be encouraged. And I hope that you all have a good night. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Bye, everyone. Good night.